Well, hello, shiny crafty people. Tim Totten here and welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanna to show you a fun craft project. It takes a real simple, inexpensive towel for your kitchen and turns it into something very useful and easy way to keep it from falling off of that, the, the handle of the, your oven door, but also makes it cute. And this is actually what it's gonna look like. Look at this cute towel and the decorative fabric goes here but it's a little it's a little uh, place for the fabric the, the towel to turn over the bar and the way you take it off when you're ready to use it is you just pull look how easy that is so why don't you come over to the cutting table with me and we'll see what it takes to get this project started so to make this we're going to need our uh, dish towels and i bought these at dollar general for just three dollars for two of them that makes a super cheap gift some scrap pieces of fabric that are at least um, 16 inches wide. That's how wide this particular um, towel is. And I want it to go all the way across that towel. So make sure you're at least as wide as your towel. We're gonna need an iron and some kind of ironing mat or board, a rotary cutter and something to slice with, or you might want to use a pair of scissors. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is open up my two towels. So I'll pop this off. This says the towels are 25 by 15. So I'm just gonna do a real quick measurement and make sure that's, that they're at least 15 inches across. And I'll use my the board here. And I have uh, marked it on the bottom of my board down here. So this is actually only like 14 and a half, actually, if I measure it. Let me use this piece, I'll show you what I mean. This says 15 on the, on the package, but there's no way that's 15 inches across. Let me measure that. Yeah, this is 14. So I'm just gonna make sure I cut my material uh, wide enough to fold back. All right, so 14. Now I have to choose which material I'm gonna use. And with this, um, it's important to me also that the that this particular um, towel be sort of reversible looking. Because when we fold it, we're gonna fold it into thirds you know, it's gonna fold like this into thirds. And then our material that we're gonna tuck through is gonna be here and it's gonna tuck back in uh, side of that. And I just wanna make sure it doesn't look bad if it was opened at all here. So I kind of think this one might be a little too dark and the grays don't really match. So I'm gonna do the, the little cats. And I think actually I might do the cats on this darker one. I think they'd be cuter on the darker one, but um, I want to make sure I see the cat's eyes because I'm only going to use about an inch and a half strip. So I got to make sure when I cut, the cat's eyes are right in the middle. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and make sure this one is also that 14 inches wide rather than being the 15. This one's even a little bit skinnier. This one's like 13 and a half. Wow. It's amazing how far off those are. Well, I'll show you how to fix that as you go through, not the towel, but how we do our fabric. So I know that I want that to be about an inch and a half, which would be um, three inches wide plus a seam allowance on each side so I can stitch it together and turn a tube. So what I'm gonna do is make it add a quarter of inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna be three, three inches plus another half of an inch. So three and a half inches I'm gonna do here. So half of that is 1.75. So I wanna make sure on my ruler that the 1.75 mark is at least going through when I get to three and a half, is at least going through some eyes of some cats. So my 1.75, if there's only a couple of them. So in fact, I need to move up here to where the 1.75 will go through some eyes of some cats. Make sure that goes through and there's quite a few of them on there. And then I can go ahead and cut, I'm gonna cut one side and then I'll cut the other side in a moment. So that's the first side. Then I'm gonna take here and put my 1.75 inch mark, three, I'm sorry, three point, three and a half, three and a half inch mark, 1.75 is halfway through. My three and a half mark on that edge I just cut and then go through. Now, I could, I could literally fold this entire thing in half and sew down to the edge, I could sew all the way on the one side, turn it inside out, but then I don't get any finished edges, like on the ends, and that's what's gonna end up on this 
guy here. So what's a better plan for me to do is to figure out where I'm gonna place it and figure a way to mark so I know how far to go toward the edge. So I'm gonna take some pins and I'm gonna put my pin down here, right at that edge there and down here at this edge, but not through both materials, just through the, the top material. And then that's how I want that to be that long. I want a stitch to go through that. So I can fold this in half and I'm gonna get my iron out here so I can press this. Now I'm only doing a temporary press because um, I will press this back to where this seam is against the towel later. So we get nice pretty seams otherwise. So I'm gonna press that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start stitching here and then down, leave an opening and stitch the rest of that. Then I can clip off, turn these inside out, and then that other edge will get will get uh, stitched down. Actually, I may do it closer toward an end on this one. I think I'll do it toward an end, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because I know this part's gonna get stitched down and we're gonna leave an opening. When we put this on a towel, when we sew this on our towel, right? We're gonna do about, about halfway down our towel. When we stitch this on, we then wanna have space where that other towel, other part of the towel tucks in, but it'll only be a very small opening, like about three inches. So if I do the, the space here, then once that gets turned inside out, it'll get stitched down. I won't even have to step it, stitch it beforehand. Let's go over to the sewing machine and I'll stitch and I'll leave an opening. I'm just gonna put a couple little pins in it to know where to leave the opening. The two white ones are the opening. Stitch here and down, skip and down, and then we'll come right over back over here. All right, so I'm at my machine and I'm gonna go ahead and um, uh, do what I talked about. I'm going to stitch straight down. Now I'm using some black thread, but you could use whatever would match if you wanted a gray. I'm using about a two millimeter stitch length and I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna put my needle in the down position so I can turn it once I get here. And then I'm gonna go to that pin and then back stitch. I'll skip to the other pin. And again, this is gonna get turned inside and you won't even see it later. I'm gonna put this needle right down next to that pin. Again, I'm not, I'm not sewing over the pins, just be careful. And then I could have marked this out or cut it ahead of time, but I'm pretty good at keeping my things um, perpendicular. So then I'm just gonna trim these and you can do it with a pair of scissors if you want. And I want a nice crisp edge or corner. So I'm gonna cut the corner in a little bit here and then I'm gonna cut it over that way. Take out most of the bulk of that. This other one I'm gonna do the same thing, go ahead and cut that straight off leaving about a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Cut and cut. All right, my next step, I put my, so we're gonna turn these inside out and you need some kind of a point turner. Um, I would suggest you do not use a pair of scissors. I'm going to point this with my fingers first. So some people will take their scissors and go right in there and shove, and that's really not a good idea. If you had to, you can use a pen. Um, I'm actually gonna use the other end of this. Um, this is a brush we clean out our sewing machines with. I'm just gonna use it to kind of get in there, and then I'm gonna use a pin for the rest of it, which I'll show you in a moment. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna take one of our straight pins and just grab that fabric in there and kind of pull a little bit. Kind of, it kind of gets the right part that needs to be out. I wouldn't do this with very delicate fabrics, by the way, but this is a kitchen towel application. And then I'm just gonna go through and turn the whole rest of this thing inside out. Now, if it was a lot longer, I would use one of the turning tubes or some of the other things that they sell to turn tubes like this inside out, but it's not super long. 
And so as just as I keep going through there and finding that, you can also, um, you could use the other end of that thing if you wanted and help shove stuff out. So I actually saw this on another channel and I can't remember the name, but I'm gonna link it in the description. I saw a version of this, not the exact same thing I'm doing, but a version that encouraged me to try this version to create this one. And it really was about keeping things from falling off of my um, off of my stove at home. I'm so tired of opening this, the, the oven door and then all the towels fall off. And I don't like those decorative towels that have like the, the where somebody takes a pot holder and they put it at the top and then they put um, buttons and stuff on it or Velcro. Those are perfectly fine. I just, it just looks like a little old lady's kitchen to me and I'm not a little old lady. I prefer a little more um, seamless modern type of design. And also I want it to be super easy to get this off of my my uh, oven door if I want to, like if I need it right away. So that that's why this version is the one I'm creating. So once I get that out, I'll do the exact same thing with those corners and then we'll iron it. I'm gonna struggle with this for a little while longer. I'll see you in a second. After way more time than it should have taken, I realized two mistakes. Number one, I stitched across those ends so I can't actually turn this tube the way I wanted to. Luckily, however, you can see nice, cute, you can see the cats, so you know it's cats. I don't like this side, I like this side better. And I've got that nice flat edge, so I'm gonna go ahead and iron it, press it, I should say press, not iron. And then I'm gonna just turn this part back in. This is those, this is that opening that I, uh, that I used to um, sew through, turn it inside out. So I got one side in and then I'll turn the other one. You, I will say sometimes I prefer to use a longer, um, a, a wider seam allowance because it gives you more fabric to turn in right there. But that worked. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay out our, our towel and we wanna measure where our halfway point is going to be. So I'm going to to put it in half. This towel is so. This is a. This is. You can tell this is a three dollar per set towel set. You know. I'm gonna do what they should have done at the factory, which is clean off some of the little threads that came out. Not good. Um, it still works. The towel actually still still works, but not pretty. All right. I'm gonna find the center space and put some pins on it. So I've got that here the center. Now, you gotta remember that this is going to be, it depends on how you want your piece to go. Like if you added some ruffle at the end, so you might want you might want to put the material like a little up, I should go this way, so that when you pull this through it, when you fold it, when you pull this through, it doesn't go all the way to the end. Like after, you'll see if you added a ruffle to the end of this. Be cute, you could have a little ruffle fabric down there. I'm not gonna do that here, so I'm gonna put this a little bit below halfway so that when it goes um, into the, when you put it over the, the handle, it's gonna pretty much be even at the bottom. So I'm gonna put it a little bit down of the center. And I'll go ahead and put a couple of pins in it. Now, I don't want this to move side to side, so I put the pin opposite of that. If I wasn't wanting it to move up and down, I would put the pin perpendicular to the way I don't want it to move. So right now it could move a little up and down because of sliding here, but I'm really more worried about it going side to side and not getting to the edges. I wanna make sure these edges hit nice and pretty. All right, so the other thing I'm gonna do is find the center of this and measure an inch and a half over either way because I wanna leave that three inch mark. So I can find my three inches on this. Let's see, this whole thing is it's so confusing. Here's the mark. It's 13 inches wide, so center is seven and a half. No, six and a half. Pfft, I knew that. Six and a half. So that's the center, right? And I'll put a, a pin right at the center. So now I know I want to go an inch and a half either way, and that's where I'm going to start and stop. 
and put my stitch through that. I'll use two green ones so I'll remember which ones they are. Then I go over another inch and a half the other direction. You know, I think I want more like four inches, so I'm actually gonna go over two inches on either direction. I don't want it to be too pulled in. So I want that to be the width of what's coming through. So if I take my pin out of the middle, what this is gonna look like, I'll show you what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna do it this direction. This will be the finished one. We'll fold it in half, in thirds, like this. And then it will fold over. You'll put this behind the rail. It'll come up over the rail. And then you'll put that material through this piece of fabric. Like this. And then the rail is through here, and there you go. So let me go ahead and sew that since I think I like it. I like the way that works. And it's really just a matter about measuring what you want, what you want it to look like. So I know that I need to sew this, a rectangle sewing it here, and a rectangle of sewing here. Let's go to the machine. So now I've got my material out, and I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing right along the edge. And there's black in this fabric, so I'm just gonna use a black thread. You could use gray if you wanted to really match. And I'm gonna use that quarter inch seam allowance between the quarter inch and the actual uh, edge of the presser foot. So it's more of a um, three eighths. No, is that right? No, three sixteenths. I don't know, but it's a little less than a quarter of an inch. And again, I'm using a rather short stitch length on here too. All right, keep going. I can take my pin out now. And that's one that's sewn in there. You see the rectangle. So I'll come to the other one. I'll start right at this pin just just to this side of it. And make sure we catch that hole there that was made from when we turned the fabric. And I'm trying to use the same uh, seam allowance on both sides. So not quite a full quarter of an inch or I won't catch these fabrics here in the opening of that where those fabrics went together. Take the pin out, don't want to sew over it. All right, so I've sewn that through and that'll be where it turns inside out, it, where it turns and goes in. Let's magically transport ourselves to my house where I'll show you how this works on my stove. So here we are at my house, and of course, these are some other towels. So you imagine when you pull this down, those towels just hang off and could easily fall, right? This one, on there nice and neat. And comes off just as easy as the others. You just grab the fabric from behind, pull it right off. So, until next time, folks, stay crafty. Bye for now.